Hello, this is Miss Hill again, and this is the second of the arithmetic review um, lessons, and it's on addition and subtraction. So a quick reminder, remember, when you add Hello. and subtract fractions, you need to have common denominators. So we're going to be working primarily with positives and negatives, but I'm going to be looking with posi working with positive and negative fractions. So uh, let's start with addition. Um, you may have learned things about number chips or, uh, you know, number lines on how to add and subtract and you come up with all these different rules but addition and subtraction really boils down to two addition rules and one rule for subtraction so let's look at the first addition rule the first addition rule it pertains to numbers that have the same sign okay and the way I add two numbers that have the same sign is to add their absolute values and then take the sign of the numbers so if they're both positive, the answer is positive. If they're both negative, the answer is negative. Now I'm not going to go over how to add two positive numbers because I think you've done that for quite a while now. So let's look at if I add two negative numbers, like negative 18 plus negative 17. So what I have to think about is, well, what's the absolute value of eight, negative 18? And it's 18. And what's the absolute value of negative 17? And it's 17. So I have to think, okay, I'm going to add 18 and 17 together, but they're both negative, so I'm going to make the whole thing negative. And so 18 plus 17 is 35, but since they're both negative, my answer is negative 35. Little happy face. Okay, works exactly the same, th same way with fractions. Um, I just have to remember how to add fractions. So if I have negative 2 thirds uh, plus negative 1 and 1 half, I automatically know that I'm adding two negative numbers, so my final answer has to be negative. So I might as well just uh, save a little effort and potential forgetting at the end of the problem and put that sign down there now. So I know my answer is going to be negative. Now I just have to work with the fraction. So I have two thirds and I have, well, one and one half is uh, three halves and I need common denominators. So the easiest way to do this is just to multiply two thirds by two over two and um, three, ha three halves by uh, three over three. And so then I get um, 4 sixths plus 9 sixths, which gives me 13 sixths. So that's all of the work to find those two quantities just added together, or the absolute value of them. But I've already put in my answer location the sign of the answer. So then I just have to put the 13 over 6 there. And I've taken care of the sign. I know negative 2 thirds plus negative 1 and 1 half is going to be a negative quantity. I did all of this fraction work to find the quantity, and now I can just box it off and happy face. All right, so that's addition rule number one. So that means that addition rule number two is going to have to deal with two numbers that have different signs. So addition rule number two is with different signs. So one's positive, one's negative. Now what I do this time is I find the difference of the absolute values. So I find the difference of absolute and then I take the sign of the number with the greater um, absolute value. So the number further away from zero, that's the direction I take uh, in terms of the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So let's look at the example of negative 210 plus 140. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I did with this fraction one. I'm going to look at this problem first and decide on the sign first and put it in the answer location. So I have negative 210 and positive 140. 210 is, or negative 210 is much further away from zero. It's a much bigger number. So I'm going to take the sign of that number. Now I'm going to do the work here where I figure out what the difference between 210 and 140 is and I'm going to get a 70. Now I'm going to put this 70 with this sign that I've already determined. So I get negative 70. And of course this rule works with fractions too. It's the same thing. I'm going to determine the sign first and then do all of my work with the fractions. So for example, if I have negative 1 and 1 third and I'm going to add 4, I can look at those two numbers and determine the sign of the answer in the very beginning. Well. 4 is further away from 0 than negative 1 and 1 third, so I know my final answer has to be positive. Now down here, I'm going to do all the work I have to do. Um, I like to put my mixed numbers into improper fractions. I just prefer improper fractions. They, in the long run, become much easier. So negative 1 and 1 third, 
I'm going to ignore the sign for now because I really don't care about that. I already figured out the sign on my answer. I just got to find the difference between 4 and 1 third. So um, I can think of four, uh, 1 and 1 third as 4 thirds, right? And then I have 4, and I want to find the difference between those two numbers. Um, so the difference between that I can think of 4 as uh, 12 thirds, and I subtract out 4 thirds, and I get 8 thirds. So that's the work getting the actual value that goes up here with the sign I've already figured out. So I get positive 8 thirds. Box it off. Happy face. Okay? Now, um, when you have a long string of addition or subtraction, so you're adding 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers, you take them two at a time. And if it's just addition and subtraction and there are no other operations, you just take them pairwise, whichever first whichever pair comes first. So if I have negative 15 plus negative 8 plus 17 plus negative 4 plus negative 5, I'm literally just going to look at the first two and I'm going to take care of those two numbers. So I have two negatives, which means they're both going to be, the answer is going to be negative. They're the same sign. I add the 15 plus the 8 and I get negative 23. Then I'm going to bring down the plus 17. Okay. And then I'm going to think about, well, what's this thing going to be? Well, I know it's going to be negative because negative 23 is further away from 0. So it's a negative. And the difference between 23 and 17 is 6. So now I'm going to bring down the negative 4. And I'm going to work with this next number. So negative 6 and negative 4, I know that's going to be a negative number. 6 plus 4 is 10. Now I bring down my plus negative 5, the last number I have to add. Now these are both negative. Final answer is going to be negative. 10 plus 5 is 15. So my answer, negative 15. Box it off, happy face. All right, so now this brings us to the dreaded subtraction. Uh, and subtraction's not that bad. Um, it doesn't have a whole set of separate rules. It just has a definition. Because technically, addition and subtraction are really the same operation. That's why they have the same priority in the order of operation. Um, subtraction is defined as the addition of opposites. Okay. So subtraction is just add the opposites. So I don't have separate rules. I just need to think of subtraction as addition. And if I look at the most basic example of subtraction, like 3 minus 2. Now, I don't have to tell you guys how to subtract 3 minus 2, but I'm going to use this example to show you that it's really just addition. So if, if I do 3 minus 2, it's the same thing as 3 plus negative 2. And then I just follow the rules of addition. I change it to an addition problem, and then I just deal with it as addition. So 3 plus negative 2. Um, opposite signs, bigger number, or bigger number, is 3, so it's going to be positive. And the difference between 3 and 2 is 1, so I know it's just a positive 1. Now, okay, I knew 3 minus 2 was 1 from, what, like first grade or something? But that's how this is going to work. And you're going to need to do this when we solve equations, and we're going to have to rearrange things with the commutative property. Because you can't commute subtraction, so you have to change everything to an addition. So let's look at a non-trivial example like negative 52 minus 61. Well, when I see this, I think, hey, that's really the same thing as negative 52 plus negative 61. And then I just have to follow the addition rule. So I know this thing's final answer has to be negative. And then I add a 52 and a 61, and I get negative uh, 113. Okay. Um, and it works when, and it's, for some reason, these are the ones that cause the most trouble, is when I see the two negative signs together. And I have a really silly way of remembering that, okay? So when I see two negatives together, I like to simplify the signs and let they come together to make a plus. So minus a negative comes together to make a plus. And by the definition of subtraction, if I subtract a negative, it's the same thing as adding the opposite or adding a positive, and that's why it works. Um, my silly trick works. So 18 plus 47 is the way to rewrite that. And I usually circle them in my work to say, hey, I'm going to put those two signs together to make them a plus. And then 18 plus 47 is, of course, 65. And it works with um, fractions, too. And sometimes I write them a little weird um, just to see if you're paying attention. And what I mean by little weird, I mean put things in parentheses. So if I see a negative 2 and 1 fourth and I subtract a negative 7 and I put the negative 7 in parentheses. Those parentheses aren't really like asking you to do something with the order of operations. It's just separating out the negative number. Because sometimes when I type up the homework, if I put a minus and negative right next to each other, they can kind of fuse together to look like one really long negative. To make So to make sure that you know that's a minus and negative 7, I put the parentheses around the negative 7. 
And so I'm going to rewrite this because I see my two minus and negatives. I don't like them. So it's going to be negative two and one fourth. Stupid trick. Minus and negative becomes a plus and it becomes a plus seven. And then I just have to uh, find common denominators and I end up getting uh, 19 fourths. Box it off. Happy face. Okay, so now a quick reminder, be sure to check your sign to make sure the answer makes sense. So I have a negative number and a positive number, so that final answer better be positive. It's a really quick check, but if you mess your sign up on a quiz, the whole answer is wrong. So take that extra second to make sure your sign is right.